Hi and welcome to this video. I'm Lukas Roschitzka. Today I want to clear up a common question I hear a lot from Studio One users. Is it safe to install a new Studio One update even while I'm in the middle of a project? Maybe you've seen discussions on social media or in Facebook groups where people mention issues with a new update like crashes or problems with certain plugins. I totally get why that might discourage you from trying a new update. But the truth is, you can update Studio One at any time, even in the middle of a project, without any risk. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to update without any worries. And we'll start by looking at some common myths that often keep people from updating. Myth number one. If I see complaints online, the update must be unstable. Well, not at all. Studio One has a large user base, but only a small fraction of users post about their experience online. People who have no issues usually just install the update and keep working without ever saying a word. So when you check Facebook or forums, it's really no surprise you'll mostly see complaints, simply because that's where users go when they need help. Myth number two. If someone has issues, I will have the same issues. Even if you see people reporting problems, that doesn't mean you will have the same experience. Why? Because everyone's system is different. You might be using a different operating system. You might have a different audio interface or drivers. Your Studio One or system settings might be different. You might not be using the same third-party plugins. Third-party plugins are any plugins you have added to Studio One that don't come from Presonus. And plugins are a huge factor, probably the biggest one when it comes to DAW stability, even though many people don't realize it. Since third-party plugins run inside Studio One's process, a single unstable plugin can crash the entire DAW. If someone reports crashes, it might not even be Studio One's fault. It could be an outdated or buggy plugin causing the issue even if the same plugin seemed to work fine in the previous version of Studio One. And if a plugin hasn't been properly tested in Studio One by the plugin developer, it's entirely possible that it won't run smoothly. But what I wanted to say, even if one person is struggling with an update, your setup might work perfectly fine. That's why you shouldn't assume an update is broken just because someone else had a bad experience. In most cases, it really depends on their specific setup. Myth number three. If someone says a feature is broken, it must be true. Not necessarily. A lot of times when someone says something is broken, it just turns out they missed a setting or didn't know how the new feature actually works. Maybe they accidentally changed a setting. Maybe they didn't fully understand a new feature and didn't watch any videos or read the manual. Or maybe they installed something else on their system that caused a conflict. I've seen it many times. Someone posts about a broken feature and later realizes it was just a config issue on their end, a Windows update, a new plugin or something similar. So don't let those posts scare you away from updating. Okay, now here's the real reason you never have to worry about updating Studio One. You don't have to replace your current version of Studio One. That's what most people do, but you really don't have to. You don't have to replace your currently installed version. Every Studio One update can be installed in a separate folder. This means you can have multiple versions installed at the same time. Actually, as many versions as you like. So if there's a new update, you can try the new version Explore the new features, test if your plugins are still working, and take all the time you need without affecting your ongoing projects. And I really want to encourage you to do that. Install new updates in a separate folder. If you want, you can always uninstall the old version later, once you're 100% sure everything's working smoothly. If something doesn't work, or even if something just feels different, you can always go back and compare it with the previous version. So how do you install a new update without overwriting your existing version? Here's how it works on Windows. When the installer asks for an installation folder, you can just enter a different folder instead of the default one. For example, instead of installing Studio One Pro 7.2 to the default Studio One 7 folder, just change the name and enter 7.2. 
and then complete the installation. And now you have both versions installed side by side and you can always choose which one you want to launch. Your desktop icons will still show Studio One 7, but you can hover over the link to see which application folder it points to. And if you want, you can rename it to something like Studio One 7.2, so it's easier to keep track of your versions. On Mac, it's a little different, but just as simple. macOS will always prompt you to override or keep both versions if Studio One is already installed. So just choose Keep Both. After installing it, open the Applications folder and locate the version that you just installed and right-click it and rename it to Studio One 7.2 or similar so that you'll know what version it is aside from any others listed there. And if you want, drag it to the dock to make a new shortcut for it. Now, having the new and the previous version of Studio One installed side by side, this allows you to test the new update and try the new features while keeping your old version and being able to continue ongoing projects safely in the previous version of Studio One. And you know that even in case the new version gives you trouble of any kind, you still have the old version as a backup. So if you're worried about updating, just install the update to a new folder. That's everything I wanted to share with you today. If this video was helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Studio One tips and secrets. And feel free to share it with anyone who is unsure about updating Studio One. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.